<clears throat> I'm so confused about why I get the sick feeling in my stomach. I never got the sick feeling when I was on the Pacific coast, but along the Great Lakes coast, I don't know. It's like, it seems like it's a factor. The smell of the marine life is different for sure on Great Lakes, Lake Michigan. But is that leading, is that weakening my stomach? I just, I don't understand. But I don't like that sick feeling. This trail leads to what seems to be a network of cabins. But uh, I would be very interested in digging down into the trail to see what the surface is because trees do not grow on that trail. They've put something on it that has been preventing trees from growing on it. But there's several foundations throughout. It's, it's a pretty clear trail, but it seems like it's, it was abandoned 50 years ago. But there's just no sign of any wood structures. It's just uh, the stone foundation that they laid is all the evidence. And some piping. They do have some piping. And that's about, you know, it's very minimal. The sewer pipe. And uh, they took, either they took things out or things got grown over and rotted. This would be a perfect place to, to have a metal detector and check things out closer. All right, my lentils are almost done with my new new uh, propane canisters. I I got four full protein propane canisters that are old, but uh, they're still full and they work. I'm I just kind of just starting to use them right away here. So I'm sitting on six propane canisters because I still have two, seven, six and a half. And uh, that's that's a little much to be carrying, but I mean, when I find them like this, I want to make use of them. And that's a savings of $20 just to take the free ones. They're about $10 for a pair, $5 each. All right, so I decided to follow the trail a little bit deeper in. I think it's a government property. And you can clearly see it goes straight. I think cabins were lining this type of trail. And I just wanted to point out, I think this is a pretty dated marker here. Uh, who would put it on a dead a dead tree? So, it's a dated marker. Maybe give it 10 years ago or so. Yeah, having gone further down this trail, I, I don't see evidence of... Any more cabins? They seem maybe like they were concentrated in uh, along the coast area. There's still elements of a trail, but it's certainly narrowed. Oh, but then we got somebody who has taken the time, put in the effort to mark, I think, the trail. I think they marked it with the... Uh, orange tape, orange plastic a long time ago but it doesn't seem to go straight anymore now I can't really see a turn it's narrowed so much I know the road is heading this way I could just head straight for the road see what I see on the on the way if I head for that road I'll be I won't be able to find that trail again. <clears throat> kind of taking a risk. But I mean, I hear the highway traffic, so that's to my right. And just for exploration purposes, I think I just like to head towards the road. Because I don't think I'll come across any private property. This whole area, I believe, is to be government property. Could have been like... <clears throat> used as an old CCC camp as old as everything looks and I'm kind of impressed that there's not a whole lot of mosquitoes or overgrowth to fight through it's a pretty reasonable space in between these trees okay yep there's 
probably a deer trail at this point. There are quite a few people who walk, who seem to be around this area. Maybe people are paving the trail a little bit. Yeah, I'm starting to suspect that maybe those hunters abandoned their little tent and the chairs and the propane because there's really no deer in this area for some reason. The deer are not really showing themselves. It's kind of strange. This isn't, uh, this isn't very populated. I'm surprised too. I'm walking, I'm walking a pretty good distance to, in the direction that I, I believe to be the road that got me in here. And I'm just not seeing that road. I know I didn't drive too far off of the road. How can I possibly be going and not, not hitting it yet? So I'm a little frustrated by that. I think it's a straight road. I'll need to look at the map again, maybe. Yeah, I had some extra walking to do. I didn't expect, wow, there's a trail that goes straight in that way. So this is the trail that I drove down. And the government side is to my left. Quite a few homes on the right. And uh, I mean, people seem to be populating this area pretty good. Why the cabin section area is uh, abandoned is confusing to me. <clears throat> I got the Blousers, the Myers, Barb's Cabin. Quite a few families here that they're advertising down, down the, at the fork. Yeah, it looks like a nice area. I wonder why it's not more populated. Probably because of the, the deep snows and cold winters. So I had a, as good a look as I could on this trail. The foundations for building structures that I've seen. Now I'm gonna toast some bread. I'm not gonna look again. Maybe on the map, but there, the evidence of uh, building is pretty strong. But uh, it looks so old that I don't see how anybody would know any anything about it. I don't think it'd show up on Google Maps or any history. Maybe a museum would might know about what was going on, but you know it should be documented if it's part of the government uh, property. But I don't know. The bottom is really touching. I didn't realize how close it was before. I kind of just settled into here. I turned around and. I feel a little bit better about this spot. The bottom is touching, but I shouldn't have the ant problem that I saw. I saw ants messing around in the crease in the front engines. I wanted to put a stop to that. I think I should be good. It's all grass and dirt, except for this little rock. I just want to make sure that I clear this rock. Yeah, it really shows me touching that grass. I hate touching that grass. That, that allows insects access to my car. All right, so I managed to scrape this rock in four different spots. Didn't scrape it when I was coming in. I don't see anything leaking. <clears throat> A little nervous about that. All right, so they sounded like solid scrapes. It didn't sound like crunching or anything. It sounded like the scraping was happening on a stiff surface. I doubt my car will get flooded over. It doesn't look like there's much sign of any major flooding. It's a little wet here, but uh, not serious. Does the grass really doesn't seem to indicate major flooding, but 
we're talking my car is only a couple of feet above this water line if it raised a couple of feet which would be a big a big thing a big event that seems unlikely to happen over the course of the night i think i'd like to stay the night and the tides do rise and fall i think they're up right now i saw people walking along the beach i think they didn't have to deal with the tide this high i think it was lower before I wish I could just find a mortar out here out of all these rocks. They got little divots in them. I'm looking for a large divot rock though. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to order something. I really like a big mortar and pestle. I miss what I had. I used to own one. A lot of rocks out here that could be used. They just need to be formed better, formed more to my my needs. Like this, a little divot. What's a divot doing in here? Okay. But uh, yeah, to find the perfect one, it's probably impossible. Especially with all the other people walk along the shores and stuff. They would have taken a mortar. Because I, I just can't take any old rock it's really it have to be the right shape a nice bowl a bowl rock what are the chances I could just find a rock that's in the shape of a nice bowl this is kind of nice and a pestle too on top of that just basic food processing items and there's a lot of rocks to look at here I just don't understand why I'm looking at rocks with these divots. This one's got a ton of divots. This one looks like, oh wait, no, it's a little heavy. It's full of divots. Just a, a rock entirely covered in divots. With little, little grass, little grass divots. Grass is formed. Well, it's kind of a deep one. All right. They're not all over the place, but uh, why I'm looking at it, why I see them every so often is kind of weird. Like here, there's divots. Only on one side of the rock, for some reason. This is not a complete rock anymore. It's uh, really falling apart. It's just in pieces. Oh, there we go. A shattered rock. Oh, I'm, I'm smelling something weird. Like a, one of these flowers is putting out a strong smell. Like not quite mint. Got some sharp edges here. Cracks easy. Yeah, I just kind of step on it and it moved. Got me curious. Ooh, centipedes. <clears throat> yeah, seeing all these random rocks here in the grasslands next to the water. I'm assuming the people who built their homes in the tree line here, there's homes in there. They had to move a lot of rocks to establish their foundations and their yards. So I'm sure these rocks are just scattered for miles like this, but not everywhere, of course. Here, for sure. But yeah, you don't, you don't see rocks scattered all over for the glaciers like you do around here, northern or the uh, southern part of the UP in Michigan. It's kind of neat to see. These are, I'm assuming these are most likely natural. <laughs> Uh, deposits of these types of rocks <clears throat> this is kind of the end of the line in a lot of ways for the for the rocks they're just 
settled here after the ice age. We got a lot of these trees that died before they could get very large. For some reason they got killed off. And I've seen this type of death in Wisconsin too. Whoops. Here's a pretty short tree, about my height. Quite a few of these that uh, died off really young next to the shore. Something in the shore water that they can't handle. And the water reaches up to this point, most likely. That's why there's really not a whole lot of trees. It's probably why I'm partly feeling a little sick dealing with breathing in this water vapor. Trees can't seem to grow right up to the, the shore for some reason. I've seen a few of these light green balls around. They look like tennis balls at first. Kind of a stiff, I guess a moss. It grows off of the dead vegetation. They're kind of rare to see. A neat little appearance. It's been pretty cool just hanging out here all day. Not too many people come in this area. Not too many at all. So my parking was not too bad. I did hit that rock, but I mean my car didn't die immediately upon hitting that rock. So, And I didn't see any leaking, so maybe it'll be fine. But yeah, I think I'd like to spend the night here and then move into the Mackinac, north of Mackinac tomorrow. All right, I've eaten them down a little bit, but I'll just point out that I'm having popcorn and lentils for breakfast. I had lentils a little for last night too. So I have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And I just want to say, I cooked the whole pot where the lid was rising so I had a lot. I used a little bit of the uh, um, coconut oil, which I'm, I'm trying not to use too much, trying not to abuse. But what I did was I stirred with the wooden stick initially until the first couple of pops, then covered and shook a lot <clears throat> to make sure that they all popped pretty much. I'm pretty happy with there's a few unpopped, but that's it's better than what it's been like. As I slept here overnight, I heard the water rushing, and it almost sounded like it was creeping up to my car. It was just, I mean, it wasn't getting louder, but it's just, I don't know, it sounded like it was moving in my direction in a lot of ways. But it doesn't, it didn't. And it really drowned out any other sounds. I couldn't hear anything else. If there was any animals roaming around me, I, I couldn't really hear them because of the water, the white noise of that water. <clears throat> Pooping in the woods is something special. Because I can push as hard as I want without having to worry about like what people have problems with on the toilets having it splash back on you and restraining from pushing as hard as you want I think weakens the muscles all right so I parked my car here because I was heading to the library Mackinac Mackinac Islands or the Mackinac Bridge whatever the city's north of that I seen this uh, me, this Indian display of a, a, a hut that I wanted to get a closer look at I got a museum here and various signs. Actually, I'd like to walk over to this sign and give it a read before I walk over to that hut. All right, we got Huron Indians history. The Hurons were driven from Ontario by the hostile Iroquois and found refuge in 1671 beside Marquette's St. Ignace Mission. And so next to a church. The Indians found, or the Native Americans found refuge. Okay, and this is a repeat. Interesting. 
grave of Father Marquette. He died at age 38. He must have done a lot to be recognized as for this long. Okay, more history about the, the father who died at 38. Sounds like he might have not died of natural causes at age 38 on a trip into hostile territory. So this is a museum and they're saying it's free? Father Marquette statue. He took a uh, real risk. Wow, he just walk in. <clears throat> I'm just looking around. You can you can ask. Do I have to? Okay, then I'm leaving. I could scrape up all the quarters from this dry well and uh, pay her. Wow, that's a lot of money. <sighs> Oh wow, here's uh, more information about Marquette saying that he was suffering an illness that led to his death. He was actually slowly dying. Wow, that's uh, unfortunate. So it wasn't murder then. He couldn't uh, figure out his illness. Oh, here we got something about uh, huts. Picture of the huts. A town. <clears throat> All right, we got uh, the Consett Hut. Just gonna have a look at. Please use front entrance. I'm surprised that lady uh, insists that I pay a donation when the sign across the street says the museum is free. She's being a little forceful, and uh, I'm not gonna deal with it history isn't that important to pay for. Drying rack, okay. The Huron Longhouse. I really saying it's it was this tall, twenty feet high. And they made it out of, you know, this is this is very basic material, but I'm sure they use nails. Yeah, there's screws, but it's very basic material. Just uh, shavings. I don't know how they would have gotten the shavings like this though. Bark. Okay, bark from a particular tree. They use. It's got a lot of holes. This would definitely leak a lot. But yeah, it's not too hard to get sticks and all that. We have a sacred fire inside the longhouse. Stay out for tonight. What? This is a sacred fire. A little bit of an opening in the center for that fire. <laughs> the folding chairs of the, the Native Americans sit in a circle around. Yeah, I've never really seen this rebuilt, like, you know, to look like how it would have looked. That's, that's pretty neat. Just, uh, I wonder what they used instead of screws. Look at that. That lady is demanding donations like it's mandatory. And this DNR E, DNR E, whatever the E means is saying that it's all paid for. She's just pocketing the money, taking advantage of visitors. People pay so much, here's a 20. That's a real, that's a real $20 bill right there. <laughs> now I can pay her, not. Now I can not pay her, use this for survival. That just shows how much people are paying money around here and how much p money people have anymore around here. 
Maybe there's more down the road. I kind of want to look now. That's a big bill. All right, museum's over here. I'm just wandering around in a circle around the area. And for here, they got free day parking, paid overnight parking, no camping. Overnight parking observed from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Use payment envelopes below. Uh, nights paid. They don't say how much, so insert payments. Overflow lot will reopen. Closed on September 1st, reopen September 2nd. So just a, a night? What happened? Some kind of event? No camping. Oh, here we go. Parking fee violation, $25 fine. But if you pay ahead of time, it's $10. And you got to validate it. So this is going to be problematic for me. I think as I get closer to that bridge, parking's going to be a little more strained. They're allowing parking here in a pretty good sized lot with basketball courts next to it. And it's also museum parking. All right, it's gonna see how the Wi-Fi is. How's the Wi-Fi at this library? And the tourist town, they're likely to have a password. Not seeing anything yet. Sorry, no power. What? <clears throat> Hello. How, how long has uh, power been out for? It's 7.30 this morning. Wow. It's supposed to be back up after noon. And that affects like a whole section, right? It's, it's... Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. Huh. Boy again, what the heck? Why can't we have videos like this? Look at how wide that is. Did he have to move his camera at all? That's amazing. There's no distortion. Mm -mm. Yeah, just have a question. Um, do you have a password for the Wi-Fi when it does turn on, or is there? There's no. Okay, just get on. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right. While the library is power is out, I wait for it. I'm told in the afternoon that they'll. Be getting power restored. I'll wait in the library parking lot. I've crushed some peanuts and raisins. Now I'm gonna toast the last of my bread in the library parking lot as I wait because I really don't have any other better ideas. I think I'd like to walk to the grocery store. I'd go down this road, take a left, and then uh, another left, I think, down there somewhere. St. Ignace. Michigan, St. Ignace, Michigan. Yeah. All right. All right, I got no loitering signs. And I'm getting to the courthouse. And that was loitering signs around the jail.